Hey guys and gals, welcome back to part two of Hayes Pipe and Steel for Gary Weiss. Sometimes when you do a scratch build, uh, you have to make changes on the go. And if you remember in my last video, part one, that I had a little problem with the foundation and stuff. So, this is really the first model that I'm building without <laughs> any sort of plans. It's just coming all out of here. So, with that being said, I had to make some adjustments, pretty much scrapped the old idea and came up with a new idea. So anyhow, with all that being said, let's get on to the workbench and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Be right back. All right, guys and gals. One thing I do like about scratch building is that you can make changes on the fly. So, with that being said, I am going to show you all the changes that I have made to this build at this point. Um, I found out that doing certain things certain ways might make it easier for me. So basically, I just tore all the foundation apart and tore all the, all the uh, uh, supports for the crane apart and redoing everything. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get down to the workbench and let me, see the, let me show you guys the changes that I have made. All right, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. All right, guys, as we continue on from the last video, as you can see and remember that I did this kind of a configuration uh, to build up the floor here so there wouldn't be such a drop off and where people could get hurt. And I'm sure OSHA wouldn't approve of that. Anyhow, I'm just going to do a couple of mock ups because I had to reuse the stuff that I originally used here. So in order for me to have gotten this to work, what I had to do was, let's imagine that this is a stanchion right here. I would have had to do something like this to go around the stanchion, which would be sitting down here like this. And then I would have to put another piece on the other side to complete it. And I just wasn't happy with all these cuts because I couldn't cut them uh, the size that they are, which was... Uh, um, 2.5 millimeters by 2.5 millimeters. I just couldn't cut the holes that size. So I decided to scrap this whole idea. Yeah, that's right. I, I'll use this some other place at some other time. But for right now, uh, it's going to go away. How long is this is going to go away? And we're going to put it down here like that. And so this is what I came up with. Let me get it over here. Ah, come on. <laughs> Sorry guys, I can't get my fingernails on there. Okay, there we go. So this is an entirely new setup now. And what I did was, instead of making those L brackets for the stanchions for the crane, as you can see the crane is sitting up there and it's not completed yet, it still needs to get another coat of paint. Anyhow, what I decided to do was, I used the number 175, uh, square tubing, uh, square styrene, which equals out to, and get this, I'm going to use my new ruler here, <laughs> is uh, one foot square. So these are one foot square beams that are going to be holding up this crane. Now, on the bottom, what I did was I took this uh, number, three sixteenths tube, and it just so happens that the 316th tube will fit right on the bottom or the top, whichever, with just a little bit of a twist, you can get it all the way down, and therefore you get yourself a concrete footing, okay? So I did that on all these over here so far, and I also have the same setup as before. There'll be uh, braces that come down to here that'll join up to the uh, um, steel stanchions. So your stanchion will be here like this. You can see these blue marks. Those are the places where they're going to get glued down so I don't paint those. And that will go like that. And then those cross beams will come down to the back side of this down here. Anyhow, with all that being said, I'm going to take this and go ahead and start making my angles and put them on there, which I have one side done. I just need to do the other side. And I do have a template someplace. <laughs> I did find it and now I lost it again. But anyhow, I'll bring you back when we uh, get to that point. Talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, guys. Previously, I showed you I was making these um, crane supports in this fashion right here. 
uh, and then adding um, my, tr my uh, triangular supports as I did with this guy. But as I was building it, it was real hard because it was very flimsy, and so I decided to tear it all apart, which I, which you see down here, and um, take the uh, the footings I'm going to be using and permanently mount them to the foundation. Then I'll be able to put these guys into the footings as I originally planned. And also a thing about this is that um, I'll be able to adjust the height very accurately um, when I get these all mounted because these will be able to slide up and down in, in the uh, footings. Also, I am going to uh, use a different type of material for the top here to give it a more, little bit more stability. Anyhow, with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and glue all my footings down uh, on the marks that are there. And you can see, this. I originally wasn't going to do it this way. That's why you see the tape there, but all this tape will be coming off. And I will go ahead and spray this with the footings already mounted on here. Then I'll be able to play around with this and make adjustments and continue on. Anyhow, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do this, and we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, as you can see right now, I am preparing to mount uh, my footings for my crane support uh, structure that I'm going to be building here. And as you can see, I'm going to push this out of the way a little bit. I have kind of like a crosshair right here. <clears throat> the important line is the one that goes from the back to the front of the building. That's going to determine the width between this side and this side. So that has to be right on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these guys over the crosshairs and when the, when the X is in the middle, that's where it's going to get glued. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's get started. All right, guys, as you can see, I've got them all glued down right now. So I'm going to let those dry up. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to start doing the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and take this all apart. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put my angle pieces on these. And we'll continue on from there. So when I bring you back, I should have all of these on and uh, the foundation pretty much painted at this point. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and continue on. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, as I have shown you previously that this number 226 316 tube and the number 175, let me get it here, the number 175 work very well together as far as being a footing as you can see here, and a steel tube. Now the footing is just over two feet in diameter, and this is just over one foot. I know it sounds massive, but it's going to be holding up a crane, so I thought to use heavy, some heavy steel. Anyhow, as I was showing you guys, that you can just take this and you can twist it on, and it goes on pretty easily. What I did was I just shaved down the corners just a bit, so I can just go right in just like that because that's going to help me make adjustments to this uh, when I get it done. So, with that being said, I have this last one to do right here, which goes all the way down. As you can see, I've got all my footings down in there. And just to say I have lost <laughs> the uh, strut. <laughs> okay, anyhow, well, just to give you an idea how that's done, so we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, as you can see, I've got this whole whole row done, and i got this row done back here. I just need to mount these, but what I'm going to do next is I am going to put this number 294 styrene angle across the top like this, and that will make um, my adjustment to and fro, and then these will give me fore and aft. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do this, and as I'm doing it, I will adjust these. I'll be using my little, my little square. Uh, I don't really have very much room to do this, so I'm just going to have to put it like here and just eyeball and make sure that it's straight. Anyhow, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I'll bring you back when that's done. All right, guys, as you can see, I've got my crane superstructure kind of completed. 
Um, and what I did was I permanently mounted uh, my footings that I showed you that I was going to do. Uh, and as you can see, they're right here. Let's see if I can get in the picture here. You got all of these I have put down on both sides. And to make it easy for me to remove the structure from the footings, what I did was I just knocked the corners down. Just one little thing like that and like that. Just get the corners knocked down the best you can. And then when you have one of these, you can take this and you can just put it right in there and it'll slide right on there. And I made them all loose so I could be able to lift that out. And I also <laughs> came to the conclusion that I'm going to use uh, the stanchions that I already built to paint this because I will paint the, uh, um, the foundation and the footings the same color so I could do that after I paint the, the yellow. Uh, I'm going to do yellow, I think, pretty sure, on all of this framework right here. And as you can see, at the front here and the back here, I added a cross beam uh, that's going to serve two purposes. Number one, it's going to keep the width, at least in the front and the back, the same. And also, because it sticks up higher than the rail, uh, it'll be like a stop for the crane. Anyhow, uh, next step is going to be to uh, go ahead and paint this and see what it looks like. So anyhow, stay tuned and we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, one of the things I really like about scratch building is you can change stuff on the fly. And as you can see right here, I do not have my front uh, elevation uh, support beam in there yet. Uh, I decided I was going to do a little bit more changing to this model to make it look a little bit better. At first, I just had this guy. So it was going to be open with the steel structure showing. I kind of didn't like that too much, so then I moved on to the same structure, but this time with some of the sheathing on there. And that looked okay, but I always I thought that this hole was just way, way too big, <laughs> especially for being in Kansas, so you could imagine the wind that's going to be whipping through there. Anyhow, <clears throat> my final decision is going to be this right here which I think is going to look a lot better and you'll still be able to see the crane through here. Uh, I'll also be able to put a decal up in here which is another good thing and it matches up with the rest of it around the entire uh, structure. So anyhow, um, this is what I'm going to go with. Um, I hope you guys like it. I know I do. <laughs> anyhow, we'll get on with the rest of this build. All right, guys, what you're looking at now is the uh, assembly or the structure that will hold the crane up. I painted it with um, this flat gray primer, and um, I painted this with sun yellow, and I think I'm going to change the color because I think it's just a little bit too bright. But anyhow, my next step is going to be two things. Number one, we're going to go ahead and paint this, and as you can see, I have... All the spots that are going to be glued upon uh, masked off. You see I have my my uh, footings all set down there and also what I'm going to do is I take this 5,000 styrene and I put it underneath like that to keep this from spreading unwantedly spreading. So with all that being said I'm going to go ahead and glue this to this and I'm going to take it up to my garage and give it a spritz with uh, uh, winter gray, and it's a high gloss, and I will dull coat it afterward. But it's a winter gray, as you can see right there. And it says it bonds to plastic, so I guess I'm good to go. Anyhow, let me get this done, and I'll bring you guys back in a little bit. All right, guys, what you're looking at right now is the painted components for this build. Here's the foundation, and I see, I see that I made all my uh, stanchion uh, footings the same color as the concrete, which is okay. And here is the crane support, all painted up. I'm going to keep it this color, give it a little bit more color inside the building. Uh, I did break one of my rules, however. <laughs> before, uh, before I paint things, I usually make sure stuff is smooth. Well, I didn't do that right here along these edges. So uh, in order for me to do the next part of this, uh, I need to get these smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and tape off. Pretty much everything except for the corner right here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and sand it out. So with that being said, I'll be back in a few minutes. 
All right, guys, as you can see, I got everything taped off that I do not want to scratch because I am going to use this uh, sanding stick or emery board, whatever you'd like to call it. But as you can see, I just had the very edge of this uh, exposed. I can just, just hit it with this uh, slightly uh, to do my next feature. And the next feature is going to be is to add yellow striping around this area and some yellow striping down the front side of the building. Uh, and I'll show you guys what I'll be using for that. Eaten. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'll bring you back uh, when I'm ready to do the yellow striping. Alright guys, after I wound up <clears throat> sanding this down, the edges I was talking about before, I decided to add just a little bit more detail to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm going to make it look like there's concrete pads that were built here and basically what I just did was I measured 20 feet intervals this way and then 26 feet intervals this way and it just so happens that this side here is actually 25 feet. So the way I do this is um, I'll pick up my steel edge and I'll put it up against my tick marks that I have here and I'll just take my exacto blade on the back side I will drag it across the paint Like that, and voila, you have a joint line. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and finish this off, and I think that's all the detail I'm going to be doing to this foundation for now. Uh, so let me get that all done. I'm going to have to repaint the whole thing because I can see I scratched a couple of spots here. Uh, so anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and paint it, and then I'm going to give it a dull coat and let it dry, and then we'll start. Uh, the last part of this video will be for me to um, take this guy, and put him in his space like he's supposed to be and then we'll see how we go from there but anyhow i'm going to go ahead and finish this up and we'll be back shortly all right guys what you're looking at now is me trying to test it all of this stuff make sure it's all going to work uh, and i came to a realization um <clears throat> these stanchions right here are going to protrude past the building so it'll be very easy for trucks and such to back into these so what I'm going to do, and I don't know if you guys can see this or not, um, I put little tick marks here, and I am going to put bullards in place. So at least the, the truck can back up and not worry about crashing into the structure itself. Then I was also thinking about, <clears throat> I'm going to need a little office for this, for this little uh, industry right here. So, a while back, John Tanzillo, oops, <laughs> John Tanzillo made this for me and told me to use it wherever I decided to use it. So, with that being said, this is a little shack. It's got windows on two sides and it's got a door. And I'm thinking to put that back here to be like a little dispatch office or crew hangout or whatever for this little industry. Anyhow, <clears throat> I need to go out and get uh, some rod, the proper size to use for these bullards. And then I will start putting this all together and that will probably be the end of this video. Anyhow, with that being said, stay tuned until I can get to the store and buy what I need to buy and we'll continue on. All right guys, <clears throat> while I wait for my, my hobby shop to open up, I'm gonna be doing some other stuff on this. As I mentioned way earlier in this video, I'm going to be putting uh, some yellow striping around here and around the uh, outside of the uh, building on the um, <clears throat> aisle side, the open side. So anyhow, for that I'm going to be using this Highways and Byways uh, Street Graphics. Uh, the lines are perfectly sized um, and I don't have to do anything and I can overlay them and you really can't tell when they're overlaid. So, these are peel and stick. They work very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the first one, show you guys how it's done, and then we'll uh, continue to do the rest of it. So <clears throat> I guess we'll do out here first. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of these off. Maybe. <laughs> there you go. These weather up really nice also. And as you can see, I have one here right now. And we're going to go ahead. And what I do is I'll overlap it on the end so I can fold it under and give it a little more security, security to hold it on. 
and this is done before I put the uh, dough coat on guys so I'm putting this on a glossy surface and it should work out really good now this believe it or not is just going to add just that little bit of detail um, that I like doing on models that I do and even though <laughs> even though um, Gary told me to slow down on the details um, I think he knows that I can't do that. <laughs> so, Gary, this is a gift from me to you. Because you've been such a good customer. Uh oh. And sometimes they move a little bit. You just have to be nice with them until you get it down securely. And like I said, you can overlap these, and the overlap is, would be pretty hard to see. But it is tedious, so you need to take your time. And like I said, I always cut it long and tuck it under just to give it that extra little hole power. Now this one little piece right here, we're going to use that back here. So I'm not going to do anything with it, I'm just going to kind of put it there for now. And we'll come back and get that one later. But anyhow, <clears throat> as you can see, we had the first yellow stripe down. And that adds just a little bit of detail. So now I'll just take this guy and just fold him under, press him down good. And just push down. Uh, these are pretty durable, so you can uh, handle them rough, but not extensively rough. And like I said, they will take the weathering. And there you go, first piece done. Anyhow, I'm going to do the same around here, and uh, then we'll just wait till the store open so I can do my bullards. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, what you're looking at right now is pretty much the completed interior of Hayes Pipe and Steel for Gary Weiss. Anyhow, I'll show you uh, when I left off you guys earlier. I said I was going to do some bullards, and here's the bullards, and I used uh, this number, 222 one sixteenth rod and I cut them down to just about four feet just under four feet tall and as you can see they're going to do a fine job of protecting those uh, those struts anyhow um, we're turning around a little bit this way you see I got all my safety uh, safety uh, lines on there and all that not going to need none in the back because the back is going to be a complete wall just about a complete wall I might need a little bit here and a little bit back here but that's about it and then you can also see that little shack that i got back there i don't know if i'll keep it there but for now it's a good stand in but anyhow yeah so i hope you guys and gals enjoyed this video with vinnie built structures and uh it will conclude this video this is going to get a different color yellow it's just way too bright <laughs> it's called sunlight and it does look like sunlight <coughs> Anyhow, uh, thanks again for watching another Vinnie Build Structures video. And as always, your questions, comments, input, subs, shares, and likes are always welcome. And don't forget, Friday night with Cousin Vinnie. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye for now.